Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Net IQ Keynote at BrainShare 2013 in Salt Lake City. Today's keynote speakers include Jay Gardner, President and General Manager, John Dell, Vice President, Marketing Partners and Alliances, Dipto Chakrabarti, Vice President, Product Management, plus a talented cast and crew backstage getting ready to rock your world. Wednesday evening's musical guest, Sawyer Brown. And now, a man who needs no introduction, except for those of you who still have no idea who the attachment group is. The man, the myth, the legend, John Delk! Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, and welcome back to day two and the NetIQ keynote this morning. I'm glad you're here. We want to start off by thanking the sponsors who made this possible uh, Guava, SEP, and SUSA. Now, yesterday we heard from the Novell Business Unit. And I got to tell you, I felt for Bob Flynn. You see, if you don't know anything about American football, Bob's team, the San Francisco 49ers, beat my team, the Atlanta Falcons, two weeks ago. And it was actually a very similar fashion, kind of came down to the wire, last minute play. We thought we got hosed as well. So the treatment he got up here yesterday, I just didn't feel like that was appropriate. So we were trying to figure out what to do to make it right to Bob, and so we came up with the idea of getting him a great big sympathy card. And so, Bob, we want to let you know that we are so sorry for your loss, and I personally feel your pain. Well, we learned more than that yesterday. We learned about Bridget and her new role as CIO. We learned about how she could get access with the mobile story that the, Net IQ, that the Nobel Business Unit told, and today, the NetIQ business unit is going to build on that story and take it forward. You know, the world is changing, isn't it? And we're driving that change in our behavior as consumers. Uh, this year, for the first time, we have a BrainShare app. And so I haven't looked at my printed BrainShare material, my program guide. I've just pulled out my phone and looked at my app all week. And that's symbolic of this expectation that we as consumers are bringing and how we're changing behavior. We want it now, we want it quick. If we like an app, we can use it almost immediately, and if we don't like it, we discard it and move on to another one. And as a result, that's driving businesses that we work in and that we do services for to change as well, right? Because we as consumers are also users, right? And as we're users, we're bringing that consumer expectation. We call that the consumerization trend. And that expectation is driving our businesses to change. And of course, as a result of that, the role that we as IT professionals, customers of NetIQ, partners of NetIQ, the role that you play is being redefi redefined almost on a daily basis. And if you think about it, one of the key points here is it's moving really fast. The pace is really the problem. You know, I remember the days when it was okay to submit a request and to wait and to be told you'll get that in a few days or a few weeks or we're busy, we'll get to it when we can. And that's really changed, hasn't it? Because if we can't service those requests, and many times users will go find someone else who can. So it's this pace that we have to deal with. And along with that, we see internal and external pressures that a lot of people are talking about. These are pretty familiar to you, cloud, mobility, BYOD, social identity. But what I want to do is think about it not only in the IT and the enterprise set uh, sense, but if you think about it, we're experiencing these on a personal basis as well. For example, in the cloud, my son plays American football. He's a junior in high school. And his football team 
stores their video from their games in a cloud application. I happen to be one of the cameramen on Friday night. I film the game, and we go back, and someone uploads that film, and on Saturday morning at 9.30, less than 12 hours after the game is completed, those football players are sitting in a room watching last night's game, getting instruction from their coaches. That's an example of how the cloud is impacting your personal life, I'm sure, as well. And the reality is we bring that user experience in, and we know we can buy technology with a credit card. And as a result, we're driving, as users and consumers, an opportunity for the IT world to redefine how it solves business problems using the cloud. We heard a lot about mobility yesterday. Novell BU's got a great story. But if you think about it, what's happening is we're assuming that we're going to have access wherever we go. We're now disappointed if a device can't connect and get us the access we need. And in fact, it's not just access we're looking for. It's data. I want my data where I want it, how I want it, on demand. And of course, one of the challenges with the world we live in is how do I secure that access? How do I make sure you have the right privileges to get access to that data? So mobility is driving a lot of change. BYOD, I have a daughter who's 20 and is studying overbroad. Two days after she got to the University of Edinburgh, her computer crashed. Now, a few years ago, this would have been a nightmare. It's still a nightmare for a dad to try to figure out how to help a daughter thousands of miles away, but she was carrying other devices. She had access from those devices to her school information, her email, her personal information. And so while losing her computer was bad, it wasn't really the disaster that it would have been a few years ago because we are all used to the proliferation of devices, the opportunity to make choice. Uh, we have these devices everywhere. And one of the things that happens is it blurs the line between our personal and our business. And we saw that yesterday in terms of the ability to keep those two things separate. This choice is what's making it difficult for us to do our job. Because we're used to, in many cases, restricting choice, aren't we? Finally, social identity. Uh, if you watch the Super Bowl, one interesting thing that happened when the lights went out, new Twitter handles got created. On Twitter, there's a couple of new handles called Super Bowl Lights or SB Lights. And they were tweeting out jokes about, well, we'll pay the electric bill next time, and things like that. But here's the interesting statistic. Less than 30 minutes after the handle was created, one of them had 18,000 followers. That quick, and that's an indication of a couple things. One, we're all in these networks, and they're starting to be very pervasive. But the other thing is that it's a question for us as IT professionals of how far should we go in embracing social identity. And we'll talk more about that when we get to the demos later on in the keynote. So we have these forces, but what's a way to summarize this? Well, Mark Andreessen summarized it this way. He says it's really about control. For the last 40 or 50 years, you and I in IT have been in control. We had to make hardware procurement choices, we had to make software deployment choices, and that control sat with us. But the big change is we have this global market of all these early adopters with smartphones connected, and the consumer mentality is now driving the control. The change in control is the big change. And so as a result, in the spaces that we play in at NetIQ, identity and access management and governance, and systems management, data center management, we have to begin to adapt as well. And that's what we're going to show you this morning. So the world's getting complex. The real question is, how do we simplify that and achieve, help you achieve your business goals? Recently, we had a chance to sit with James Stratton and ask him this question, analyst with Forrester. Let's listen to his response to how this is changing the role of IT.
So cloud actually has a profound impact on the relationship between the business and IT. And it can be taken two ways. Um, if IT is resistant to the cloud and defensive, that the cloud is a threat to their position or a threat to what they do inside the data center, it can be a significant gap widener and make it very difficult for IT to show their continuing value in the company and they'll become more and more a cost center um, and less and less strategic. The other way they can approach cloud computing is they can say, this is our opportunity to show the company how technology is the driver for agility and how I can move from being someone who manages everything and that I'm a cost center to being someone who evangelizes the use of new technologies and is at the heart of how new agility and new business services get built. And it's really up to IT to decide which path they choose to take. So we've really embraced that concept. It's up to IT. We have two choices. With this pace of change, that means we have an opportunity. James described the opportunity this way. We can be evangelists. We can be enablers. And the solutions that NetIQ wants to show you today and build in the future will help you do that in a way that you can solve those business problems and deliver value to your organizations fast enough, or this phrase you've seen around the hall this week, at the speed of business. So with that, I'd like to introduce Jay Gardner, Vice President, President and General Manager of the NetIQ Business Unit, to tell you more about our strategy and our vision for dealing with this change. Jay? <laughs> 